Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in, in the presence of the Lord. Another day to always give him the thanks right now. Another day to always give him the praise right now. Another day to always give him the glory right now. Another day to always magnify a shout of his holy name right now. Another day to praise him and worship him and glorify his holy name. Another day, my brothers, my sisters, for us to continue to pick up our crosses and follow Jesus, no matter where. Another day that we choose faith over fear, no matter where. Another day just to be in his presence. Another day just to glorify him. Another day to let you know that God is the same today, yesterday, forevermore. And God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy. And he is so worthy to be praised. Jesus is my everything. Jesus is your everything. He is your healer and he also your provider. He is your protector. He is your watchman. Jesus is your light. He is your guide. He is your direction. He is your compass. I say Jesus has unchangeable hands. So don't you dare let go of Jesus' unchangeable hands. But the point I'm making right now today, my sisters and brothers, that praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. But one thing I know about praise, praise is something that, that it has come overnight. Praise, it takes development, it takes perseverance, it takes character, it takes love, it takes commitment, it takes dedication, it takes hunger, it takes thirst. And when you have that, I said when you have those traits, not one out of five, but you got to have all of them at this name. And once you have all that, that's why praise is what I do. And that's why praise is what you do because it is the living and loving God. That is living inside of you. And when you have that. That's the only thing that matters. That's the only thing that you always. Wants to do. Is give him the thanks. Give him the praise. Give him the glory. And magnify his name. Shout out his holy name. And continue to seek him no matter what. Always put your faith and your trust and hope in Jesus. No matter what. Because Jesus will never fail you. He will never disappoint you. He will never leave you lonely. He will never break your heart. Because man will leave you lonely. Man will disappoint you. Man will break your heart. Man will tell you one thing. And will not keep his word. But the God we serve. He said he's a man that he should not. He's a man that he should not lie. That he stand on his words. And that he stand on his promises. Glory hallelujah. Each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. And if you're in love with Jesus, really, really in love with Jesus, if you have a commitment with him, if you have a, de a dedication to him, do you have devotion with him? Do you have a hunger with him? Do you have a thirst for him? And if you do, open up your mouth right now today and give Jesus a shout out of praise and glory. I'm going to keep it real right now today. I know that's only a handful of you right now today. That's only a handful of you right now today. How I know because the word of God says so in, in Isaiah and also he said in Matthew, he says some of them praise me with their mouth. Good God Almighty. But their heart is so far from me. And if your heart is committed and dedicated to Jesus, I know that you're a praising man and I know that you're a praising woman. Praise Jesus right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, come before you peacefully and humbly right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for this beautiful blessed day. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this chance of a lifetime. I thank you, Father God, that you allow myself, my brothers, and my sisters right now today to come together, Father God, to fellowship in your name right now, Father God, to praise you in your house right now, to worship you in your house right now today, Father God. And Father God, we're here today to have fellowship in your house right now today, God. Father God, there's no place that we rather be at right now today, God, but in your house, seeking you, praising you, worshiping you, and glorify your holy name. Oh God, this is your house, God, the house that you built on solid ground, the house that you built on solid foundation, the house that cannot be filled, the house cannot be destroyed, and it cannot be broken into, God. 
Oh, God, your house is a house of prayer and praise. Right now, God, that's what exactly what we're doing. We're praying in your house. We're about, to, we're about to praise in your house. We're about to have service in your house. And we're about to have fellowship in your house right now today, Jesus. Yes, we are. Father God, your word also tells in the book of Matthew, verse 18 and 19, where two or more gather in your name, hallelujah, that you are in the midst of things. So, Father God, I know that you're in the midst of our homes right now. I know that you're in the midst of our television sets right now. I know that you're in the midst of our telephones right now, our laptops right now, our desktops right now, our iPad right now, or whatever gadget we have, or whatever gadget we're using, God. Oh, God, I know that you're having your way in this place right now. Oh, God, I know that you're about to show up in this this place. Oh God, I know that you about to show out. Oh God, I know that you about to turn up in this place. Oh God, I know that you about to do a new thing through my brothers and my sisters, even myself right now today, God. Oh Father God, we're here today to let you know, Father God, that we are available for praise, that we are available for service, that we are available for the kingdom, that we are available right now today, Father God, for us to continue to do our Father's will, that we are available to serve you and honor you and magnify your holy name, that we are available for our assignment, that we are available for our mission, that we are available for our task, that we are available for our journey, that we are available for our calling on our life, God. Oh God, we cast all our problems, all our anxieties on you right now today, Jesus, because your word tells us in First Peter chapter 5, verse 7, to cast everything and all things on you, Jesus, because nobody and no one cares for us more than you, God. And God, we just want to say thank you. We want to say thank you. Whatever the enemy trying to do, he's already lost. He's already defeated. Devil, get away from my brothers today. Devil, get away from my sisters today. You already, you already been defeated. In the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke every stronghold and demonic spirit that came in stronghold that came on my brothers and my sisters' life right now today. I pray they should die and be terminated and destroyed by the fire of Jesus Christ right now today. Holy Spirit, we need you to move in this place. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move, to remove the fish scales from my brother's eyes today so they can see everything what God needs them to see. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move the fish scales from my sister's eyes today so they can see everything what God needs them to see. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to remove the earplugs from my brother's and my sister's ears right now today so they can listen and hear Jesus' soft, still voice right now today in your holy, precious, mighty name. And let the church say amen and amen. And God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Yes, it is. Let's get into this word. I want to talk about today about faith. How strong is your faith? A lot of y'all talk about faith. Some of y'all think faith is a freaking, uh, freaking video game. It's not a video game. It's not a PlayStation. It is not a Nintendo. It is not no Atari neither. Faith is believing on things that you have not even seen yet, but you know it's there, you hope it's there, and you talk about it. But some of y'all, you talk more than you put up faith. Anybody can talk about something, but if you're not exercising your faith, there's no way that you can please Jesus. Faith without work is dead. You got to continue to show up and you got to continue to try. You got to continue to put in your best efforts each and every day if you're going to move Jesus. If you're going to excite him. But what some of y'all do, you're talking to him. And he wants you to talk to him. But he will say, okay, where your faith at? That's what he want to see. That's what he want to know that you have. Some of y'all talk a good game about faith, but your work is not putting up the game about faith. Your work is not showing a show that you have faith or not. It's hard to please Jesus without faith. Point blank period. He says faith without work. So if you're not putting in the work, you can't move Jesus. A lot of y'all putting up the talk but you ain't putting up the work. You putting up the skipping, but you ain't putting up the work. You putting up the hopping, but you ain't putting up the work. If you ain't putting in the work, you can't please Jesus. That's why he's overlooking some of y'all right now. 
That's why some of y'all, you keep saying, well, Jesus, I'm asking you this. I'm asking you that. Jesus, I heard that you're asking me, but you ain't put up no work. You're doing more talking than anything. You're doing more fretting than anything. you all on social media uh, putting on a show than anything, but you ain't putting no work in. A lot of a lot of y'all, what y'all doing, you expecting Jesus to do everything. You are expecting the promises, but you ain't putting in the process. You don't want to go through the pain. You don't want to go through the, the hardship. You don't want to go through the struggle. You have to go through all that to receive the promises of God. Some of y'all want a handout. Some of y'all, you are expecting Jesus to do all the work while you sit back and be lazy on your lazy boy. It's not going to happen, my sisters. It's not going to happen, my brothers. I got to keep it real with you. I have to be honest with you. You got to put in some work. And quit talking about it so much. Quit telling your homeboys what you're going to do. Quit telling your homegirls what you're going to do. Quit telling people at the job what you're going to do. Quit telling people in the streets what you're going to do. And put in some work. Because if you ain't putting in no work, if you don't want to go through the process, if you don't want to go through the pain, if you don't want to go through the suffering, if you don't want to go through the hardship, if you don't want to go through the trials, if you don't want to go through the tribulation, you don't want no blessing. You just want a handout. You just want a handout. That's why he's overlooking you. That's why he don't want to pick a wrestle and mess with you. Why are you going to pick for something and there's nothing there? Why would Jesus pick a fight with you when there's nothing there? It's nothing but error. It's nothing but talk. It's nothing but gossip. He said, I can't wrestle with that. What is that? That's nothing. I need something that I can wrestle with. I need something that I can, I can, I want to have my match with. Is your faith strong enough to have a match with Jesus? He ain't talking about no talking match. He talking about a faith match. How strong is your faith? Because without that, without that, there is no way, absolutely no way, that you can even move him. That he's going to pick up the phone and call you. That you can send him a text message. That he's going to text you back. You can't even send him an email. That he's going to e email you back. Because all you have is talk. You're not putting in no work. You're not putting no work at all. How I know? You better read on this scripture right here. So please turn your Bibles to Genesis 32. And we're going to read verses 25 through 27. That's Genesis 32. And we're going to read verses 25 through 27. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he what wrestled with the man. Well, let's go back to 25 again. 25 is the most important verse and part of this whole text. He said, when the man saw that he could not what? Overpower him. Who's the man? The man is God. God cannot, God cannot overpower Jacob. The reason why God cannot overpower Jacob because Jacob's power, Jacob's faith was a little stronger than God. It was right there on the same verge as God. And when God saw that, God said, I cannot overpower this because why? This man believed and he trusted something more than what he can ever see, more than what he even knew. Jacob had crazy faith. Jacob didn't mind to go through the pain. Jacob didn't mind going through the suffering. Jacob didn't mind to go through the struggle, the hardship, because Jacob left his family behind and he said, I got to do something about this. Jacob had faith. And when God saw that, God said, I know this man right here. But I want to pick a wrestling match with him. He didn't see the man. What God actually saw inside of Jacob, he saw faith. Do God see faith inside of you right now today, my sisters? Do God see faith inside of you right now today, my brothers? And if he do, he is having a one-on-one -on -one keep mess with you, a one-on-one -on -one wrestling mess with you, a one-on-one 12-round -on -one bout boxing mess with you, it's all because of your faith. 
And we know that God can overpower us. We know God is way stronger than us. We know this. God can break us in half if he want to. God could have broke Jacob in half if he wanted to because Jacob was not a big man. Jacob was a small man. Jacob was a skinny man. Jacob was a fragile man. But Jacob's faith was powerful. It was strong. And when God noticed that, God said, let me go because Jacob's faith was overpowering God because Jacob said, there's no way I'm going to let you go. I have came too far in my assignment. I have came too far in my mission. I have came too far in my task. I have came too far in my journey. God, you got to be tripping on something. God, you got to be drinking on something. God, you got to be smoking on something. God, I don't know if you hit your head last night, but tonight is the tonight, and I'm not letting you go until you bless me. And when God realized that, God said, I met my match. I met somebody who has some stupid faith. I had somebody who has some crazy faith. I had somebody who was wrestling with me and did not give up. He said, God, you must be tripping. I'm not going back to going back to my family empty-handed. After I made a promise that I was gonna I was gonna come back with blessings. After I made a promise and said I was gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. After you gave me my assignment, Jesus, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. God told Jacob, he said, let me go. The second part I'm about to ask you right now today, have Jesus told you to let him go? And if Jesus has not told you to let him go, that means that you are not putting up a fight. They mean that your faith is not as strong as your talk game. They mean that your faith is not as good as your fronting game. They mean that your faith is not as good and as strong as your flexing game. As your as you continue to uh to perp and front around people, your faith is not that strong. Because if your faith was as strong as Jacob, Jesus would have said, "Let me go," because your faith is overpowering him. The third thing. Is your faith overpowering Jesus right now today? And I believe that some of my brothers and some of my sisters right now, I believe that your faith is overpowering Jesus in a certain way that Jesus is about to start turning things around in your favor. Open doors about to start coming. But the enemy tried to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus is going to come back and give you life and give you abundance of life because you didn't give up. You didn't throw in a towel. You kept, you kept on continuing to hold on, on until Jesus' unchangeable hands. And even though it was time that you want to give up, it was time that you want to throw in a towel. But you look back at your life and you look back at your journey and you look back at your assignment and you look back at your mission and you say, no, 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 I'm not going out like this. I have came too far. And there's no way I'm leaving here empty-handed. Jesus, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. Amen? Amen. So right now, Jacob's faith was overpowering God. He was getting the best of God. And look what God had to do. God had to touch. Mm, that's how strong that man's faith is now. God had to touch this man's hip socket. Had to pull it out of place. And when God did that, Jacob still didn't let him go. Right now, Jacob was walking with a limp. Some of you right now today, you walking with a limp. You talking with a limp. I walk with a limp. I talk with a limp. My character has a limp in it because of my faith. And I told Jesus, it don't matter if you hit my, my hip socket or my knee socket or my elbow socket or even my eye socket. I'm still, I'm still not letting you go until you bless me. And when Jesus realized that, I'm still holding on to him. And he said, LT, let me go. I said, Jesus, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. I don't care how bad the pain is. I don't care how bad the suffering is. I don't care how bad the struggle is. I don't care how bad the hardship is. I don't care how bad the storm is. Jesus, I'm already here. I don't went through the worst of the worst. So yes, it is my time to be up next. 
It is my, your time to be up next, my brothers. It is your time to be up next, my sisters. Because look how far you don't came in your storm. Look how far you don't came in your mess. Look how far you don't came in your trouble. Look how far you don't came in your hardship. Look how far you don't came in your pain. Look how far you don't came in your suffering. Look how far you don't came in your struggle. When people thought that you was going to give up months ago. When people thought that you were going to give up years ago. But you stay right here in the midst of it. You stay right here in the battle. You stay right here in the boxing ring. You stay right here in the wrestling match and say, Jesus, let's go for another round. I ain't tired yet. That's what you mean when you have crazy faith. When Jesus got a touch, that means he's got to cheat now. Jesus got to find a way to hurt you, but the thing about it, he got to hurt you before you receive the blessing. He ain't hurt you just to for you to um for you for you to fail, he ain't hurt you to break your heart, but he gotta hurt you before the blessing. And some of you been hurt in your finances, so your finance can be a blessing. You've been hurting in your marriage, so your marriage can be a blessing. You've been hurting, in, oh help me, Jesus. You've been hurting in your health, so your health can be a for your health can be a blessing. You've been hurting in your business, so your business can be a blessing. You've been hurting in your ministry, so your ministry can be a blessing. You've been hurting in your childhood, you've been hurt with your children. So your childhood and your children can be a blessing. Whatever it is that God had to hurt you in, he did it so you can receive the blessing. He didn't do this to hurt you. That's all part of the pain. That's why James 1, 2 and 3 said consider pure joy when you're going through trials and tribulations. Jacob was going through a trial. Jacob was going through a tribulation and it was a blessing on his name. But look at, look at his name changed from Jacob to Israel because it was a blessing. The trials and the tribulations that you are going through, what you are facing, and what you are encountering right now, it has a blessing. So yes, God is going to touch their hip. Because of your trial. God's going to touch their hip. Because of your tribulation. God's going to touch their hip. Because you have a blessing. You have a blessing. You have a breakthrough with your name on it. Glory and hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to right now today. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now today. But you got to tell Jesus right now. I ain't letting you go. Until you bless me. I ain't letting you go Jesus. You think I'll drop everything down? To follow you, and I'm gonna come back empty handed. Oh no, you gotta be tripping on something. You gotta be drinking on something. You gotta be smoking on something. There's no way I'm going out like no sucker. I ain't going out like no lame. Not today, I'm not Jesus. Hallelujah. So he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go. Good God oh man. He said, the man said, let me go. Jacob didn't tell God to let him go. Do you see how strong his faith is? Jacob never once said, God, let me go. But it was God who told Jacob and said, let me go. Because God was getting tired right now because Jacob's faith was so strong and Jacob's faith was so powerful. How strong is your faith is the point I'm making right now today. How strong is your faith? Do you have a category four hurricane faith? I ain't talking about a, a category one because some of y'all have a category one and God said, oh, I can smack that around. He need a category four or a category five type of hurricane faith if you're gonna if you're gonna move Jesus. If Jesus is gonna say, let me go, because if you come with him with a category one, he gonna, he gonna knock that right on out the way. Dang, that ain't strong enough. He needs some as equal as him or even powerful than him. Faith is believing in things, things that you have not even seen yet. But you're believing in it. You know it. You ain't worried about what somebody else thinks or saying. It's what you know. It's what you believe. It's what you have faith in. Even though that you don't even see it. Jacob's faith was crazy. It was off the meat rack. It was astonishing. It was amazing. It was mind blowing. And when God saw that. He said good God oh my, Where did this man come from? I thought I was going to break him when I touched his hip pocket, but this man didn't give up and he was limping and everything. But Jacob never gave up. 
He never left Jesus unchangeable hands during the pain, during the suffering, during the struggle, during the hardship. And a lot of my sisters and a lot of my brothers, even myself, we have not let go of Jesus unchangeable hands in the worst of the worst of storms that we've been in. The pain that we have been through, the suffering, the struggle, the hardship, the disappointment, the slam doors, how people turn their back against us, but we still right here in the wrestling match with him. We are still in the ring going for another round to have another knockout with Jesus. He smacked us, we smacked him back. He kicked us, we kicked him back. He bite us like Mike Tyson, and we bite him back like Mike Tyson. But we stand right here and say, Jesus, what else did you get? I believe soon and very soon, Jesus is going to scream out. And he's going to say, my daughter, let me go. And he's going to say, son, let me go. He's going to say, LT, let me go. And the reason why he's going to say, let you go, is because your faith has overpowered him. Your faith was on the same level as his, but now it have got an increase. It got a boost because the Bible say he don't bless in the shallow, that he bless in the deep. And I believe that somebody right now today, you threw way deep out there. Just you say, you know what? This all I got. It ain't no plan B to this. It ain't no plan C to this. I put all my eggs in this because this is what I believe in. This is what I trust in. And this is what I have my faith in. And God said, that's what I like. Because one thing I know about a man and a woman, especially, especially for a man and woman who don't got it going on like that, they're not going to waste their money on investing in themselves if they don't believe in themselves. They're not going to invest in their product if they don't believe or have faith in that product. When you believe in yourself and you bet on yourself, you're doing deep. And God said, good God Almighty, now I got to rest with him. We got to have a kickboxing match. We got to have a wrestling match. We have a, We got to have a 12-round boxing match. No matter how hard you hit me, Jesus, I'm going to get right back up and hit you back. Say, let's get it, let's get it on. Some of y'all been hit so hard and so many times that the hits and the punches, you have got amused to them. Now you don't even feel them right now. You are numb like Nova came right now. And Jesus said, good God, I just nut you out with a two-piece and you, and you continue to get back up. I just hit you with a blow so hard and I saw that your whole skin complexion turned another color and you stared right here in my face again. I told you no more than one time and you stared right here in my face again. It's like the Canaanite woman. Jesus said, with that kind of faith, I got to bless you. You got to tell Jesus right now today, Jesus I ain't letting you go until you bless me. How I know that? Look what Jacob said. That man said, let me go before this day break. So Jesus is getting tired. He said, time come, Jesus, I don't want nobody to know that you beat me. Jesus is looking and saying, I don't want nobody to know that you overpowered me. So let me go before day break. I don't want nobody to see this. I don't want nobody to know that, that this skinny man outpowered me. So God don't want nobody to see this. But look what Jacob said. But Jacob replied. He said, I don't care what time it is. Where we at? I ain't letting you go into what? You bless me. So Jacob told God, I don't care what time it is. Where we at? Who going to see you? Who going to pick at you? Who going to laugh at you? But I ain't letting you go until you give me what's rightfully mine. That's what Jacob said. I will not let you go until you will bless me. The man asked, asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but what? Israel. Because what? You have struggled. How many right now today you are struggling with God in the midst of your finances? How many right now today you are struggling in the midst of God in a separation and a divorce? How many right now today that you are struggling with God in the midst of your health? In your dreams, in your business, in your ministry, but you still hold on to your are you still holding on to Jesus unchangeable hands? How many of you right now today? And he told me your name is no longer Jacob, that your name is Israel. You have a new name because you struggle with God in the worst pandemic, pandemic that you went through. And right now we went through a pandemic this year. 
2020 open our eyes this year. We went through the worst of the worst of storm. We didn't know how we were going to come out of it. We went through the worst of the worst of the pain, but we didn't know how we were going to come out of it. We went through the worst of the worst in our suffering and our struggle and our hardship. We went through the worst of the worst in this dark, dark time, but we continued to trust Jesus. We kept, we kept, we kept continuing to pick up our crosses and follow Jesus. We kept continue to, to put our faith and our trust in Jesus. But we told Jesus we ain't letting you go till you bless us. We don't care who's looking at you. That's that bad Jacob world. He said, I don't care what time it is. I don't care if the sun finna come up. I don't care if the moon finna come up. I don't care if the stars finna, finna shut down. I ain't letting you go, Jesus. You can say what you want to say. But I ain't letting you go until you bless me. You know what you owe me. And you know God owe you something? You got to tell Jesus right now. Jesus, I ain't letting you go until you bless me. You already know what's rightfully mine. I've been right here in the midst of all of this. Where have I went? Nowhere. But right here, rest with you. Having a boxing match with you. Having a key boxing match with you. But Jesus, my faith is crazy. Jesus, I even went in my pocket when the money I ain't even had to invest in myself, to believe in myself, to be, to invest and believe in your ministry, Jesus. I don't care who don't like it, Jesus, but long as I like it, long as I love it, long as you give me the opportunity, long as you are using me to preach your gospel, God, I believe in this. So yes, Jesus, I went in my pocket, I took my last of my last of my money, and I said, Jesus, here it is. That's all I got, God. I don't have a plan B. I don't have a plan C. The only thing I have is this right here. And they say, son, you are moving me with your faith. And I say, Jesus, I ain't letting you go until you bless me. The point I'm making right now today, how strong is your faith? And if you have strong faith like Jacob, get ready. God is about to tell you right now today, please let me go until this day break because you are overpowering God. God knows that who have crazy faith or not. And if it's you, give God some thanks right now. Give God some praise right now. Give God some glory right now in the house of the Lord. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. But I was praying a simple little prayer that God is already working everything out in our life. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep on in prayer, my sisters and brothers. I just ask your guys to continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up to this seven minutes LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen.